Hi, this is Richard Engel reporting for us. Joining us now is Israel's Minister of Excuse me, Israel's Minister of Strategic Affairs, Ron Dermer. He is one of the five members of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's War Cabinet and a former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Um, thank you so Good much to be with you, Kate. for being with us. I'm sorry for the mumbling up up top. Um, let me ask you uh, about Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and this indefinite um, uh, security force that will be uh, within Gaza. What does that mean? Well, he didn't say an indefinite security force, and he also didn't say he was going to occupy Gaza for a period of time. What he said is that Israel would have overriding security responsibility, and I think that's clear. The administration of Gaza is something else. That's going to have to be done by the Palestinians, who those Palestinians will be, what the governance will be. We don't know. Uh, we know who it's not going to be. It's not going to be Hamas. Overriding security responsibility means that as Israel goes into Gaza and as we destroy Hamas's terrorist infrastructure, what happens afterwards, what happens six months later or a year later, a year and a half later, if there's another force in Gaza that's trying to rebuild that terror infrastructure? That's what he was talking about, and I think people maybe didn't understand, and so I'm glad I have the opportunity to clarify it. He's not well, talking well, about reoccupying it. Gaza, just maintaining overriding security responsibility. Well, clarify it for me a little bit more. Does that mean, is it sort of what, and how do you maintain security over Gaza? without actually being in Gaza? Well, there's, so it's a good question. There are two different things. There's an issue of a policing power. You know, what is the security force that's there that's dealing with the normal security challenges you face? And then there's the anti-terror fighting capabilities that you have. What if you have intelligence that says there's some kind of lab and they're building rockets? Who's going to go and deal with that? Now, you'd always love to have a local partner who's going to do it. But what's happened, unfortunately, not just in Gaza, but it's also in the West Bank, is we've had to go in to a lot of these areas. You remember 20 years ago, Israel had an operation called Operation Defensive Shield. And we actually rooted a lot of the terror infrastructure out, and it reduced terrorism pretty dramatically for many, many years. Unfortunately, we've had recently, over the last several years, an attempt to rebuild that infrastructure. And so from time to time, Israel has to go in to these areas, whether it's Janine or Nablus or elsewhere. Now, we don't want to put our soldiers there. We don't want them to be in those cities and towns. But in Gaza, for the last 17 years, Israeli soldiers have not been there. We withdrew entirely from Gaza. We uprooted all the settlements that were in Gaza. We went back to, you know, what internationally is the 1967 lines. And what we got is a terror state. So obviously we can't repeat it. So after Hamas is removed from power, after we've dismantled this infrastructure, Israel's going to have to retain overriding security responsibility indefinitely. Will, be, will there be a force that will prevent terrorism from emerging there? Will there be a Palestinian force that will build and govern Gaza the way it should for the people of Gaza and not just to destroy Israel? Uh, that remains to be seen. It sounds but that's like what semantics the Prime Minister meant when, when you're talking he said about that. occupying here. Because it sounds a lot like what you guys have going on. Not in the at West all. Bank. I, I, no, it's actually not. It's not semantics at all. You had for many, many years Israel's soldiers. Uh, were in Gaza, and they were in control before the Oslo Accords, which gave both Gaza and Palestinian cities uh, to the Palestinian Authority. Israel actually governed there. Israel was in control. Uh, since Oslo, we were not. And then when the withdrawal from Gaza happened, we totally cut ties from there. Now we have a problem. We have a terror organization that did this horrific attack. I think everybody understands, and I think there's unity in this goal. We share it with the United States to eliminate Hamas. Now, once we eliminate Hamas, the question becomes the day after, okay, who's going to govern in Gaza? Now, if you can tell me that there's going to be a Palestinian force that's going to be committed to rooting out terrorism in Gaza, then you can have a conversation about what Israel's role so is going to be. So if there was a Palestinian force, if they were able to uh, elect a government that, that Israel didn't see as a threat, is that a two-state solution? Is Israel open to a two-state mm. solution down the line? Mm. Well, now, now you're talking about something else or the two states and what would the sovereign powers of that state be long term? It's a different conversation. The question is, you have a period of time, you have the Palestinians governing themselves. What are they going to do in terms of fighting terrorism and preventing terror infrastructure from emerging there? We've got like 500. I just like wonder 500... how long you give that because if we're talking about what comes in the future, because if, if you're going to try to go back to the day before October 7th, I don't think there's anybody out there that's saying, hey, that's a good idea. That worked because right, what exactly. was happening in Gaza was not good. People were feeling angry right. and frustrated and the terror group um, uh, was born out of that. How do you how do you stop that from happening again? I, you're talking about an indefinite security um, structure of some sort. How does that not breed resentment and anger among the Palestinian people who have been hoping for generations 
for their own sovereign state. Listen, there's so much that I have to unpack in what you just said about frustration and frustration leading to terror and everything. I don't want to get into it. What I will tell you is that the problem that we have with Hamas has nothing to do with frustration. It has nothing to do with occupation of anything. Israel's not in Gaza. We weren't in control of Gaza. Hamas is a terror organization that is wedded to the destruction of Israel. It's like ISIS. And in fact, as the president himself said, President Biden, it's worse than ISIS. Their charter is to murder Jews worldwide. It's a genocidal terror organization. You're asking me, after we take out this genocidal terror organization, now you're telling Israelis, let's talk about a Palestinian state tomorrow. Let me explain to you what Israelis understand when you're telling them about a Palestinian state tomorrow. You're telling them that you're going to create a terror state that's going to repeat what happened on October 7th. So are you, and are you, you have a mass leader. Wait, let me just finish, Katie, because it's, because an, a, what you're, it's an important, well, I, it's I an important point. I'll answer your question. Ahead, I'll answer ahead. your question, but it's an important point, because everyone's talking about this for the last 30 days, and it's important to understand something. It's not just that Hamas was a terror organization that did what they did. They educated an entire generation of Palestinians to hate Israel and to hate Jews. Now, unfortunately, what's happening in the Palestinian Authority, which controls the West Bank, if you look at their textbooks, if you look at their media, if you look at what they're teaching their children, it's no different than what Hamas is teaching their children. That's why the leader of the Palestinian Authority still to this day cannot bring himself to condemn the attack on October 7th. So you're telling Israelis, well, let's have the PA just go into Gaza, the Palestinian Authority. Which PA? The PA that is raising its children also to target Israel, I think the hope for the whole region, and this is real hope, is for Israel to win this war and to eliminate Hamas and to get a reformed Palestinian governance body that is actually focused on the welfare of the Palestinian people. So we don't have to go through these rounds and rounds so that Palestinians don't have to suffer, to commit themselves to peace with Israel, to educate the next generation of children for peace with Israel. Then you try to work out a political settlement. That's how we have to approach this issue. And in, it, it in, sounds, in, the, in the meantime, Israel will have to have this overriding like security what responsibility. What you're saying to me, though, Ron, is that you don't trust the Palestinian people and that this war is in part because you have to root out Hamas, but in part because you don't trust the Palestinian people to figure out something for themselves. And that what's going to happen in the future is it's going to be the same situation where Gaza is, is not occupied, in quotes, but you can't get in or out without going through security, and they're not going to be a sovereign state. So what hope is that giving the Palestinian people for, for a future for themselves? And if you're talking about breaking this cycle of violence that, we, that generations of Israelis and Palestinians have experienced and this, this fear that exists among Israel about what, what is happening next door, how do you do that? How do you break that cycle of, of violence and, and despair without giving the, the, the people that you live side by side with some hope for their own future? Yeah, again, terrorism is not driven by despair, but it's another issue, and it's not a cycle of violence. We have, for the history of the state of Israel, How unfortunately, not, call it a cycle not of violence? Because, because it's not, because you have one party, the Palestinians for 75 years, that have never accepted the legitimacy of the Jewish state in any boundary, and that have been committed to our destruction. Their goal has not been to establish a Palestinian state. Unfortunately, it's been to destroy a Jewish state. Now, we can sweep that under the rug and pretend that, that it's not the case, and then wait another 20 or 30 years and be in the same situation. But let me explain to you what happened. Hamas was elected. About 44% of the Palestinians voted for Hamas. That's a problem. For them to vote for a terror organization, that was by the way, years similar, ago and they, and similar, they kicked out. I mean, yeah, that's that, that true. Was, it was a little different. Wait a second. Let me, everything's different. It's also true that the German people elected the Nazis, about 44%. Now, Germany in 1933 was not the Germany of 1953 or 1973. It's a different Germany today. What we need to do is have a real peace process, a real change of the Palestinians, an acceptance of Israel, an educational system which educates for peace. Then you can have a political leadership that can actually lead their people Ron, to make a historic peace agreement. Ron, it sounds like what America tried to do in Afghanistan, and look at how well that went. No, I, I don't think it has to do with America and Afghanistan, but here's the difference. Afghanistan, for you, is thousands of miles away. This is next door. We can't just roll the dice with the future of Israel. This is not a problem thousands of miles away. It's literally 200 yards away. So we have to have this change. And what happened, and it's very important, I think Germany is a much better example, and Japan. You had a military victory. 
And in the wake of a military victory, and you had two really fanatical societies. Now, was it all Germans? No. Was it all Japanese? No. But it was a complete and utter military victory, and that led to a change. And the United States was in Germany for several years. They were in Japan for several years. And today, Germany and Japan are two of your strongest allies. That's the change that we have to have the Palestinians, not sweep this little problem under the rug about the radical, uh, radicalization there, but to actually deal with the root of the problem and give the Palestinians a better future. And, and that's the argument that the Americans made about what they were trying to do in Afghanistan. But again, you're right, it is thousands of miles away from the United States. Uh, Ram Dermott, thank you so much for joining us. I, I really appreciate it. You, you ha hold an inside position uh, in the war cabinet there, and, and we really um, appreciate uh, you coming on and explaining to us uh, the Israeli perspective on this and what you think is possible and not possible. Well, we're going we're gonna to hope for the best and work for the best. There you go. Ron, thank you.